good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> Everybody's a suspect. Hey, Ted, where the hell's Mark's bro? Don't fuck with the Chuck. Welcome back to Toe Tag Reviews. I'm Chuck, and today we're going to talk about Scream 6, directed by Tyler Gillette and Matt Bettinelli and came out in 2023. Courtney Cox and Roger L. Jackson are to date the only two actors to appear in every installment in this franchise. Jack Champion, who was just 17 at the time of filming, is the youngest actor to portray Ghostface. We get a cameo from Grace from Ready or Not, and we also see Freddy Krueger for a split second on the subway. Lastly, Omega Beta Zeta returns when Frankie asks Tara if she's going to be a member of that sorority. You Omega Beta Zeta? No, not yet. But with all that being said, on the film! The movie begins with Laura, who is waiting for Reggie to show up on their first date, but he gets lost. We find out that she's a film professor, and he pulls the classic, what's your favorite scary movie? What's your favorite scary movie? She doesn't like that. She, she doesn't fall for it. We also find out that she specializes in slasher films, dude. Fuck yeah. She goes outside to meet him and goes down a dark alley, and he calls her out on all the cliches that she just fell for. So he runs down the alley and kills her. Big sad. Turns out it's Jason, AKA Flash Thompson from Spider-Man. My fist break in your teeth, that's the accident. No, not that one. Who wants one more? No, not that one either. No sleep till bum 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 busted. This fucking turd right here. Jason goes home and gets a phone call from Greg, who's his partner in wait. Is that an Ice Nine Kills magnet? And they're watching Jason Takes Manhattan on fucking TV? Score! Greg calls Jason and they play warmer or colder. Jason finds Greg's chopped up body inside the fridge and an OG ghost face shows up and kills Jason. I'm not gonna lie, the mask, it's cool. It's cause it's like weathered and everything. It just feels like Halloween 2018 to me. We see Sam in therapy and Dr. Stone is very uncomfortable with her opening up to murdering Richie. Sam comes home and hears Quinn getting her freak on with Paul. She tells Sam that Tara went to the frat party and then we see Tara getting turnt at this frat party cause turnt's what kids say no. Nowadays, right? Chad shows up and ah. blocks Tara. And then a little scuffle happens between Frankie and Chad. And then Sam shows up and tases Frankie right in the giggle berries. Tara freaks out on Sam because she just wants to live her life. She doesn't want to be a victim. And Sam's just not allowing that. Chad's about to make a move on Tara. And then Quinn comes in and ah. blocks her again. We see the hunky neighbor Danny come home. Sam just starts making out with him in the hallway. What? The group sees on the news the murder of Laura, Jason, and Greg. Detective Bailey calls and tells Sam that she needs to get to the station because her ID was left at the scene of the crime. On the way to the station, Ghostface calls, and it's Richie's contact. So things are starting to get spicy. He does a very piss-poor attempt to attack him. The sisters run into the bodega, which is just such a fun word. Bodega. Ghostface goes in the store and kills a couple people, and we get a decent cat-and-mouth sequence. The sisters flip a shelf over and escape, and during the investigation, my girl Kirby Reed, she shows up, and we find out that Ghostface is planting the masks at each crime scene. About to get interesting. As they leave the precinct, Gail Weathers is there. Sam tries to punch her but misses. Tara connects though. Damn, that's a good right hook. Good form. They recreate the same scene about Gail's book and how she was bashing Sam and Tara. And I love Gail Weathers, but this whole repetitive story that she does in every single fucking movie about her book and how she's bashing people, it's just so overdone. Like, I'm over that shit. She tells Sam and Tara that she talked to Sydney and she's taking Mark and the kids somewhere safe because they deserve their happy ending. Tara makes a a really good point right here. Or maybe you're just afraid that without Ghostface in your life, you're gonna fade away. You can just see on her face the realization of the, the truth behind that. Ghostface shows up to Dr. Stone's house and brutally stabs him right in the schnoz, dude. Like, right in the fucking nose. And then we get another five-minute rant from Mindy about the requels and franchises. And, like, dude, she is so fucking annoying in five and especially six. She tries so hard to be Randy. And I get it. But it just, like, I get secondhand embarrassment because I'm just so irritated by her. Detective Bailey and Kirby realize that the masks that that are being planted at each crime scene is going from Amber and Richie going all the way down the franchise back to Billy and Sue, which is a very Roman Bridger thing to do. I like that aspect. Chad comes up with the nickname Core Four and Sam becomes prime suspect. Danny sees Ghostface in Quinn's room and tries to alert Sam, but he can't reach anyone. Ghostface cuts Mindy and attacks the Core Four. Danny conveniently throws like a 20, 30 foot ladder across the alleyway and they shimmy across for safety. Here's where we get the VHS rewind moment. 
Annika, Annika, I don't know how you pronounce her name. She's a very disposable character. But she's crawling across and Ghostface flips the ladder. She falls and bashes her head right off the dumpster. Look at that thing. It's fucking incredible. And we get Detective Bailey doing some horrible acting when he comes out and you fuck with my family. You die. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so bad. It's almost as painful as like watching Sam attempt to cry because there's no tears ever. Gail and Kirby show up and Gail takes everyone to the abandoned movie theater, which we get the incredible shrine. And then we get another <laughs> cameo. They devise a plan to trace the killer's call. Turns out he's all the way across town in Gail's apartment. Ghostface calls Gail and I love when he says, Maybe it's time someone made a buck reporting your death. We get a tense chase scene, but Ghostface stabs Gale a few times and Sam and Tara show up and scare Ghostface off. The core four go to get on a train. Mindy and Ethan get separated from everyone. On both cars, there's a bunch of Ghostface costumes because it's Halloween, everyone's dressed up. Mindy is super skeptical of Ethan. There's a good scene on the train where the lights flicker and Ghostface keeps getting closer and closer, which once again, that's Halloween 2018. Mindy gets stabbed in the stomach and realizes that it's not Ethan. Chad, Tara, Sam, and Kirby all go to the shrine to ambush and trap Ghostface, but Detective Bailey calls and tells them that Kirby's behind everything. Chad and Tara finally get their kiss. Aww. And Ghostface comes in and stabs Tara right in the back. Backstabber! We get another chase scene where both Ghostface shows up and tag Chad and they stab him like, I don't know, I can't even count that high how many times they stab him. Turns out Detective Bailey, Quinn, and Ethan are the killers and their motive is one of the most ridiculous things ever. Revenge for the death of Richie. You killed our brother! You're Richie's family. Yeah. It's very Mrs. Loomis, because that hasn't been done before. Kirby gets stabbed in the exact same spot as before. Damn, dude, give my girl a break. Tara stabs Ethan right in the mouth and then twists the blade, which, <laughs> oh, that's brutal. I will give it that. Sam kills Quinn by shooting her right in the forebrain. But that part I never understood because Sam's got a knife, Detective Bailey's got a gun, and they start charging at each other. They tackle each other and fall over the railing. If she's running at him, why didn't he just shoot her? Like, what the fuck? It's so dumb. Sam puts on Billy's costume and kills Detective Bailey, and she stabs him even more times than Chad got stabbed. Like, what the fuck? And then delivers the final blow right to the eyeball. And if you thought Ethan was dead, psych! He comes charging at him, and Kirby throws a big old fat back TV, reminiscing the death of Stumacher. I saw that in a scary movie once. The core four, Gale and Kirby, all survive, and the movie comes to an end. Toe tag score? One out of five. Pros, a couple cool deaths. I like the original mask, how it's like weathered. But for the cons, this movie is heavily flawed in my opinion. And it contradicts a lot of things that the previous movies call out for. I could pick this movie apart all day. It pains me, pains me, pains me to say it because I'm a diehard Scream fan. I love this franchise. It's my all time favorite horror franchise. I just, I couldn't get behind this. I went into it blind. I didn't watch any trailer, nothing. It's in New York City. That is a huge city. That could have been a character by itself. They could have played more with that. Better writing. Like, I, I don't know. This movie just, it swung for the fences, but it just struck out, in my opinion. But what are your guys' thoughts on this movie? Did you guys enjoy it? As always, I'm Chuck. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Until then, see you later.